welcome you ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome along to Player Patagonia here at Colchester to do. My name is Hayley. This is my colleague, one of our trainers, Kate. And then we're joined by three beautiful young ladies as well. First off into the pool was the magnificent Paris, the largest of our five sea lions. Next up we had Winnipeg, the smallest of all five. And at the end there we had Atlanta. And Atlanta is the princess of the group. She's certainly the most pretty as well. So what we're going to be doing out here this afternoon is just demonstrating some of the work that we do with our sea lions on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, sea lions are considered to be a ferocious predator. Each of the girls, you can see that they are large animals and they weigh over 100 kilos each. So they are big animals and for that reason it's important that we're able to check them over safely each day and they are a predator. So we start off with any kind of training by playing games. Relationship building is one of the most important things that you could possibly do. So Kate, we're playing a simple game of fetch at the moment. Of course, with fetch, it's really quite easy. It's not too taxing mentally. The sea lions can't really get it wrong. All they've got to do is go and find its toys and bring it straight back to Kate as well. It doesn't really involve much of a thought process. But it does help to encourage that relationship and a bond as well. Because all of the training that we do here at the zoo is through a method known as positive reinforcement. Basically, that works on the principle of your rewards, rewarding behaviour that you wish to encourage and simply ignoring behaviour that you don't want to encourage. So if the girls were to do something that hadn't been asked of them or to do something that, that was perhaps wrong, then we're not going to scream and shout at them, tell them off or anything like that. All we're simply going to do is just give them a moment of reflection, just ignore them for a short period of time and just giving them that moment of reflection enables them to think about what they've done and maybe to correct themselves if they need to. Of course, you've got to have a strong bond and a friendship or a relationship in order for that to work. You imagine being ignored by a relative stranger, then perhaps you wouldn't be bothered by that at all. Whereas if you were to be ignored by one of your members of your family or perhaps a close friend, you'd certainly be more, more worried about that and would perhaps think about what you needed to do in, instead. So now we're moving on to making things slightly more difficult and more complicated. Out in the wild, these sea lions would be really quite active. They'd have to hunt for their dinner. Of course, here at the zoo, they don't need to worry about hunting. They might just wonder when they're going to next fed, get next fed, but certainly not where their food's going to come from. They know that we'll provide that for them. So it's important that we get them thinking just as they would be out in the wild. They're very good at hunting and they're good predators. So what we're doing now is just a bit more difficult. They have to go back out into the pool and retrieve some items as well, which they did a fantastic job off there. And you would have seen Kate giving each of the sea lions a cue, a signal, to go back out into the pool, have a look around, use one of those natural senses, and see what they could bring back. Now in this case it was toys, but alternatively they would be performing that behaviour correctly if they found a rock and brought that back, maybe even a leaf, or sometimes some careless people do deposit their mobile phones into our pool as well. So the sea lions will even retrieve those for us in addition as well. And you can see that that relationship building really pays off because Kate's able to get really close to each of the sea lions and check them over. It's important that we can do this on a day-to-day -day basis. So you see with Paris there at the end, she was checking over her body, making sure that Paris didn't have any lumps, any bumps, any cuts or grazes at all. We can also ask the sea lions to lift up their flippers if necessary as well. They are, of course, supporting their body weight on those flippers as well. And as Paris in the end here, she's certainly the heaviest. In the winter months, she can even get to 150 kilos. So it's important that we do ask the girls to lift their flippers up. Because just as you would with a horse, you wouldn't be able to see the underside of their foot if you didn't ask them to lift it. So we ask the girls to lift both the front and the hind flippers to check that they haven't hurt them as they're walking around on them as well. Also on their hind flippers, they've got some very small nails as well. Just using like we would perhaps to scratch, or maybe these girls also use them for grooming as well. But in the way that a person can clip their nail and certainly pull it slightly, the, the sea lions can do that as well. So we also check those nails and make sure they're intact. But some of the most important husbandry behaviours that we have in fact trained involve the head area. Of course, just like people, sea lions have got eyes and ears. And you can see on the side of the girls, they've got very small external earlobes. This is one of the differences that tells you whether they're a sea lion or a seal because a seal doesn't have these earlobes. They've just got a hole on either side of their head. You can have a look now with Kate and Atlanta at the far end. That's what she's doing. She's showing you those ears, but she's having a look at Atlanta's eyes closely as well. They're in swimming around in salt water, and of course this is the best kind of environment that we can provide for the sea lion. But it doesn't necessarily always rule out the possibility of eye infections or ear infections. So just checking them on a day-to-day -day basis make sure that we can pick up any problems easy. You can see that Atlanta was perfectly happy to sit nice and still. She would even sit still long enough for us to administer either eye drops or ear drops if the need arose. 
And because they keep their head and tidy still, we can definitely make sure that, that all of that medication is going to reach the desired location as well. This is perhaps one of the most tricky jobs that involves uh, us as part of our day, and that's just checking inside the girl's mouth. Those of you that are a bit closer might be able to see that Winnie and Paris say they don't have any white enamel on their teeth. It's not because they've got poor dental hygiene or anything like that. Feline teeth are supposed to be dark. And there's sort of a brownish colour at the front and they get progressively darker towards the back. That's perfectly natural. But if the case arose and we did need to get a closer look at their teeth, they'll allow us to do that with even being able to brush their teeth with a small toothbrush if necessary as well. And of course, eating a diet primarily consisting of fish. We don't gut them, they eat them whole. We need to make sure they don't have any small fish brains sticking in between their teeth, poking their gums, which could cause them to some discomfort and potentially build up and cause a, a bigger problem as well. So let's talk about some of the husbandry behaviour that we do here at the zoo. But of course, it's important that we keep the girls physically active as well. So what you see now is us utilising some of the natural behaviours that they would be performing out in the wild. It's a behaviour actually called porpoising, and you probably associate it with dolphins, but as you can see, the sea lions are perfectly well equipped at doing this. And the reason that they will do this porpoising is because they're marine mammals. They're not actually able to breathe underneath the water. Just like us, if we're swimming, we have to keep coming to the surface, and so do they. Especially important if they're being chased. So if the predators out in the wild consist of great white sharks and killer whales, and they like to chase the sea lions, so in order to make their escape, they will do that porpoising motion taking a short, sharp intake of breath as they're trying to leap out of the water to avoid the predators as well. So it's a very useful tactic as well. The sea lions can in fact close their nostrils when they are underneath the water, and this helps them to prevent getting water up their nose and down into their lungs. And when they're at rest, they can actually hold their breath for about 35 to 40 minutes. So unlike us as people, of course, we've, we've not got the lung capacity to be, a, to be able to do that, but very, very clever. So don't be alarmed if you see the sea lions a bit later on after they've been having a nice uh, snack here this afternoon. Just like us eating a roast dinner and going to sit in our armchair and having a nice rest after our dinner. It will actually lay either at the bottom of the pool or sometimes on top of the tunnel there in order to allow that meal to digest as well. I just told you a little bit about our sea lions. They are each available for adoption. I'll just recap their names. We've got Paris who's currently doing some lovely porpoising in the pool there. She's the largest of all the girls. They have a bossy boots as well. Next up, we've got Winnipeg. She's the clown of the group. Very mischievous, very playful, very entertaining sea lion. And at our room there, we've got Atlanta, our princess, the prettiest of all five of the girls. Big eyes, lovely long whiskers, and a bit of a diva as well. So a bit stubborn sometimes in addition to that as well. So if you'd like to find out more about adopting any of our sea lions, do head over to guest services, and our colleagues there will be happy to provide you with further information. So now that on behalf of Kate and myself, we'd like to thank you very much for joining us here at Colchester Zoo. Of course, 2013 is our 50th birthday year as well. So we thank you very much for coming to visit us on such an important year for your continued support. And we'd like to wish you a very pleasant afternoon here today. But also look forward to welcoming you again in the future as well. So thank you very much. I think you give Kate and our three beautiful girls here a big round of applause as well.